welcome back to the standpoint and seated right opposite me i have ruka yaro diliman she is a chairperson for kama sagnarigu and um, good to have you on the standpoint finally thank you next to her i have rashida to idisa she is senior program officer for comfort ghana good to have you on the standpoint thank you and then I have Rahina to Abudu, Kama National Chairperson, and I like to call her Madam President <laughs> or Madam Chair. Thank you. Very Good to much. have you on the standpoint. Thank you. Let me start with you, Rashida. What is the story of Comfort? It all began in 1993 in Zimbabwe. Okay. When the founder... so it's barely 21 years. Yes. The founder called Anne Cotton went there in a research to, to conduct a research on why girls in Africa, especially in Zimbabwe, do not go to school. And from her findings, she realized it was poverty. So Anne went back. Um, and I'll say comfort began in Anne's kitchen because when she got back to uk she didn't have the funds to support girls but she had identified some girls in zimbabwe so she decided to prepare pastries and that was how comfort started out of Anne's kitchen the money she got from the kitchen the, the kitchen she, she started used that comfort. to support 32 girls she began with 32 girls mm. in zimbabwe and Ruka, you are a beneficiary of that dream, vision that started in Anne's Kitchen. What is your story? Where are you coming from? I schooled my nursery, primary, senior high, everything in Tamale. Okay. But I left to WA, UDS, to get my degree. Yeah. And when I finished, I got the chance to do my service with the Tamale Polytechnic. Okay. So afterwards, after the service, we were, you know, national service people hoping you get maintained. That didn't happen with me. So I was in the house for some time. I didn't actually know what to do. Okay. And then one day somebody called me and said, there's this program that is coming up, Comfort. And the person told me what Comfort was all about. It was open to only Kama members, mm -hmm. but I was lucky. The director and the management decided that they were going to make it possible for a few people to also come and join and then see how they can bring new things yes, to. Right. So that was how I got in. I was recruited as a trainer, okay. a financial literacy trainer under the Financial Literacy and Entrepreneurship Program. Okay. Raina too. Yeah. What about you? Okay. I joined Kama after senior high school. Okay. I completed senior high in 2002. So 2002 after the exams, I was just in the house. I was not doing anything. From a, a family of uh, 12, my father has two wives. Okay. My mother has six children and my stepmother have three. Okay. So um, after senior high, I was just at home. Then one day I met a friend back at school and she told me about this network. Mm -hmm. But then they had just started in our district. Okay. So in 2004, I was employed by Comfort as an untrained teacher to Bumpurgu Yunyo district. So I moved from my district, Isman Prusi, mm -hmm. to Bumpurgu Yunyo to teach. I As thought an untrained, untrained teacher. Okay. I taught for a year and I was um, transferred back to Isman Prisi. Okay. Because they saw that it was a bit distance and I had to lead my parents okay. to go to Bumpuru Union. Okay. So in 2005, an opportunity came again that all untrained teachers should go for a training to become professional Jesus. teachers. So I went in for this also program. Also by Comfort? By Comfort. Okay. They then sponsored me and I went through the program for four years. Okay. I came out with a diploma in basic education right. and I didn't stop. I just continued. 
and did a sandwich program and I'm now out with my first degree in wow. basic education. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's why I expected you to clap. <laughs> so Rashida, does it mean that Comfort concentrates on helping people to go into volunteerism and then later sponsor them to further the education or mm. find them employment? Not really. Um, Comfort's focus is on girls mm. educating the girl child so we pick girls needy girls for that matter because we can't sponsor every girl okay. so our focus is on needy girls we pick them pro give them education and then that's where the empowerment um, comes see, in right. um, but we pick our sponsorship we have various sponsorship for the various uh, levels right. we have um, um the junior and second or junior high and senior high sponsorship we have a program called the bursary program where it focuses on girls at the junior high and at the senior high mm. we pick a girl under the bursary program we provide her with all educational her educational materials mm. uh, for that of the senior high school we pay their school fees in addition mm. but for B, uh, the junior high school because they don't pay school fees we don't um, pay fees but we pay for their registration fees at the final year so they okay. can write their okay. examination so you take care of their books we, their uniforms yeah. everything yeah. we provide them with books uniform um sanitary pads uh, sandals mathematical set calculators notebooks exercise books pens and all that mm. uh, for the senior high especially those we give the same materials with the yeah. same uh, educational resources but right. um, those in the um, hostels those who are not in boarding schools we add food we mm -hmm. give them grains we give them rice oil and all that and who takes care of their uh, fees for the hostel we do you do yes you pay for the hostel yes right okay let me take a short break and come back Welcome back to the standpoint. Yes, we are still talking about comfort and what they do for the girl in need. In my intro, I told you about how they identify some girls from poor backgrounds and they help them through the education. And we have some young ones here who have the experiences to share. I mean, that the, I call it testimony, the comfort testimony. And I'll start with a beautiful young lady called Selena. Where's Selena? okay selena tell me about yourself how did comfort find you what was you, your situation before they found you i had my junior high school level at my place i completed 2011 mm -hmm. when i completed i got admission to one of my village schools in Avrongo central and it was it was a single sex school but due to financial problem, I couldn't get the fee to go and pay one time. So by the time I got there, they told me adv admission has closed. So I came back home and I even lost hope. I thought maybe that was going to be my end in schooling. So I was in the house. I didn't know what to do. One day, one of my area boys told me that he wants me to go to one of the schools I've just completed. That's Circle Senior High School. And I said, the fee that I have to go and pay that I can't pay. Because the school is a day school and I have to pay for all that the others are paying so i can't do it so i just have to stop and wait for maybe another time they told me i should have hope and i should look forward to see my future bright so i should try and go in so i went in and the headmaster took me but told me i have to pay the fee before i get into the school how to pay the fee was a big deal so it wasn't easy on my side and then on the side of my parents i came back home i have to carry firewood about 17 kilometers to go and sell. Ben Chaco, 17 kilometers to go and sell before I was able to get my school uniform and some other exercise book to start with my schooling. So when I start with the schooling, the headmaster told me that I have to pay the fee because if the school fees are not paid, I won't be in the school. So the day that he told me this story, I felt it in me and I couldn't sit in class. So I went back to the hostel and I wept for the whole day. That was on Friday, so I even became sick and uh, they took me to the hospital on Sunday. 
So when they discharged me, I went home. So I was in the house on Tuesday. One of my friends called me that I should come back to school. There's an NGO coming to help needy girls. I said, this NGO, they are coming to help needy girls. But most at times, you will see that maybe they will come and politicians and other things will come in and they'll pick those who are even rich their children mm -hmm. instead of we the yeah. needy ones so i'm not going to do anything i'm going to stop school but she encouraged me and i came back to school on tuesday in the evening i wasn't even feeling well but when i came on tuesday that was the following day wednesday they came so they brought us a form we filled and we did everything so they picked me as a bursary girl that day was the happiness day in my life i, I said i saw my problem too. So I said to myself, are my problems too going to solve? So when I said this to myself, I became happy and I rejoiced for the whole day. I went back the next month. They came in, they paid our school fees. By then, my school was still a day school. They brought us food, everything that we need to make ourselves comfortable in the school to learn. So I was very grateful when they did that. Mm. And I'm so very grateful for comfort, for what they've done for me. Because I always say I was dead in my education. Best comfort who came to rescue me from my grave so i'm very grateful <laughs> so, so have you oh, what, so have you finished senior high school yes i just completed this year and currently i'm in the kasnan and kana west as a kama chairperson wow <laughs> so were you at nakbala when i came there in june were you were you yes, there the i program? was there i was there in the induction in, in the induction I saw you, yes so you're part of kama now yes i'm part of kama yeah graduate so what 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 do you want to do? What do you want to do after senior? Where do you want to go now? In fact, now, if I go back and check my results, I wish to go to school and what I want to become in future, since my childhood is to become a lawyer and I'm still working up to see. Wow. <laughs> and you will become, you will become, because I hear that um, Confed also has a scholarship program for yes. the tertiary institutions we'll talk about that later but okay. i'm just wondering with the background that you say you're coming from i'm sure your parents how many are you in the family children we are my father children we are only three okay but okay. as of the time that i went to write my bc by then my parents were apart but because of the help of comfort when i completed and they saw that oh comfort has really impacted something in me and maybe they will look forward to see the changes in the family they are able to come together as married oh wow this is i mean amazing this is amazing that they through the help of comfort your parents are now together wow now pass a microphone on to nancy um that's Nancy. Okay. Yes. Nancy, what about you? Okay. I joined Comfort when I was going to the university. Mm. So after senior high school, because of the financial burden at home, I had to um, do um, teaching in one of the private schools in Tamale. So when the results came, I was wondering what I was going to do next because knowing the situation at home, but that didn't uh, discourage me. From the little monies I had gathered, I was able to buy some university forms. Okay. So I applied to school and I did well in my exams. So I gained admission to study human biology in the University of Cape Coast. My house is not very far from the Northern Regional Education Office. Okay. So I was around one day because the the regional girl child officer used to see me around and she asked me, I told her I had completed senior high school. Mm. So when the results came, she asked to see my results. When she saw it, she was so overjoyed. She even shared it with some of her colleagues in the office. And she was like, so Nancy, what next? And I told her my story. And she said, don't worry. I know an organization because I'm one of the stakeholders in the organization. Yeah. So you go back, prepare. I'll take you to comfort. So I went home, I prepared, I told my mother about it. So the D day came, I went to her, we went to comfort, we went and met a woman called Wendy Otu. So she narrated my story to her and she mm. gave me the forms to fill. Wow. So now have you called, are you, you, yes. are, you are at the university? Yes, I'll be doing my national service in the university as a teaching assistant. You've completed the university? Yes. <laughs> Human biology. Yes. you completed? your degree in human Mama, biology yes. and you're going to be a teaching assistant. assistant at the university yes this is what we call brilliant
but needy child. Yeah. Brilliant but needy girl. And I'm looking forward to be a celebrated scientist like my role model, Professor Rama Adi. Oh, may she rest in peace. Yeah. May she rest in peace, yeah. And now Ruth. Ruth Gariba. Pass the microphone on to Ruth. Sister Ruth. Yes, Are you auntie. like the Ruth in the Bible? <laughs> yes, Auntie. <laughs> Um, I met Camford when I was in my senior high school, that's Ghana school. Mm -hmm. um, I actually couldn't get there. I completed my junior high 2008 and by then I knew my parents couldn't have um, afforded the fees for me to okay. proceed. So I, I took my resource, I kept it in the house and I was still working to um, cater for my parents at home. I'm actually from um, a broken home. I'm with my mother only. So I, I was just working to make sure that at least we have food in the house and some other things that would keep us moving. I didn't actually think of going to the senior high, even though I actually performed very well. But somebody in the family, my auntie, paid my admission fee to Ghana School. And when I went there, fortunately on my part, during my second year, Comfort came in to help me. And since then, my life has never been the same. I can see the smile on your face. <laughs> yes. After my senior high, I was inducted into this um, a situation that I usually call um, a life-changing association that is the Kama Network mm. and now I I am there as a core trainer, a trainer in financial literacy and entrepreneurship and with this I am able to cater for my family, my siblings at home. I have about um, 13 siblings. I am able to cater for them and so I, I see comfort. How old are you? I'm 22. 22 years. Yes. You work, yeah. you cater for your mother and your 13 siblings. Yes. All because Comfort came in. Yes. Catered for education to senior high. Yes. And then you got inducted to Kama. Yes. You became a trainer and now you are earning um, salary. Yes. From enough, Comfort. From Comfort. Yeah. Enough to cater for my parents and to um, get a comfortable place in Tamale for us to live. Currently, I just got admission to the um, University of Cape Coast to Ooh. study um, education, basic education. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Well, welcome back to The Standpoint. I won't waste any more time. Let me go straight to Fatima. Yeah. I'm Yaku Fatubata from the northern region, precisely Tamale. Um, I, I'm coming from a family of 13, and I'm the second last born in the family. Yeah, education. Uh, which one is the second last one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm second to last. Uh -huh, okay. Yes. So and you're last but one. Oh, but one, yes. Okay. I don't want to be the last one. <laughs> yeah, and education was hmm, a help for me. I really wanted to achieve my aim. But during the, um, after my pre primary, my dad said he doesn't have money for me to go to school. And I wanted to go to a private school, so that was a challenge. And I said, no, I have to. So, yes, I want to, yes, yeah, so I, I, d I, I started selling chewing sticks to be able to go to school. I will sell in the morning before going to school. And after school, I have to go and sell. Because if I don't sell, I won't get money to buy food and other things before because even in the house food it wasn't easy so after my jhs i had admission that time they were picking names so my name appeared in two secondary schools ghana school and islamic secondary and ghana school was home economics so i wanted to do it but my dad said home economics they will spend more money so i have to go in for agri so when I went to the secondary school, I continued with the selling. I have to sell before going to school. Sometimes, uh, if I don't sell the chewing sticks, meaning that day no school for me. Before, because if I want to go, I have to walk from Lameshugu to Islamic secondary. So it was a hell. And after completion, 
Hmm, there was the it was a, a mess because I have to come down to Accra here to really work before I can get some money and go back home. What, who did you know in Accra? Yeah, my sister was around. So I came and it wasn't easy. So after I was here and I felt sick. So I was you sent to home. What did you come to do? What kind of work? Yeah, she asked me to come. That we should get some work like private school for me to teach and other things. But when I, I came, it was a different thing. I really have to go from one house to the other, from one place to the other to work for and even sell credits. Sometimes when I'm sick, she can send me to the hospital and I'm an also patient, so I was really suffering. So I have to come back home. When I came back, our resource was in. And I couldn't go to school. I was having a problem in the mass, but no money for me to register private. So I have to go to the orphanage to help in the orphanage, no one orphanage to be precise. So I was washing the case, the um, tents, the toilets, and other things, and I was earning. I'm now 25 years At old. That time, how old were you? that time I was about 18 years so i had to do all the washings and at the end of the month i'll get something and the money i was getting i was really saving it to be able to register for private i completed sh's 2006 and i wrote private 2008 and i was able to make my math grade up so i applied for tertiary nursing so the admission came and i couldn't help myself i was in the room crying for good one week, I didn't come out. I was in the room because I knew we had nothing. My mother said I should give up because even the secondary school, she, he was said she was she would take her clothes out to sell to pay my school fees and other stuff, and I also have to sell. So this time she said the money is too much, and she has no cloth left. She can't sell anything, yeah. and she the bowls to all is finished. She has selling everything, so I can't go to school. And since primary school, my dream was to be in this. So I said, no, I will try. If God said I will go to school, I will surely go. But they gave me two weeks to pay my fees. So one week I was indoors crying. So one day I just came out and met a guy who introduced me to Comfort. He said he, he knew about one organization called Comfort. I didn't know the place. He gave me the location. I wrote my application. I right. put on a paper and wrote the application. I went there. Oh, rain had me. <laughs> but I said, no, I won't stop. I had to go. There. Yes, I went there. I was all wet. I went and met Sister Rashida, gave my application to her. And all, every day, almost every day, I was what in the, was the office. You had to walk from your house to the place? Lamashogu to Agrik. Hmm. <laughs> More than 200 kilometers. It's far. It's far. So I have to walk there. And the rain had me. I went and gave it to her. And every day, I was there to follow up and see. So later, she assured me that maybe I will be picked. But I have to get money hmm. somewhere. I said, I don't know where. So they came in and helped me pay my school fees mm -hmm. and i went to school mm -hmm. so when i went to school my the school fees was intact mm -hmm. and my feeding if i go to school I, if not vacation i can't come home and i've learned a lot in the network and also me achieving my aim being a nurse i never thought i could have done that mm. if not because of comfort so now and now nurse. yes and next year inshallah will go and do midwifery i want to be a gynecologist wow. 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 wow that's nice is there a microphone here i'm going to put somebody on the spot pass it on to the lady in kente i want to ask her why she was crying pass the microphone on to her uh, what's your name? Grace. You were crying throughout when Fatima was telling her story. Why were you crying? Sometimes you go through these things and you just give up. But they hold on and then I don't know if they're able to achieve their goals. And then I just completed the university. But there are people who have these opportunities but they don't make it. So if you don't get this opportunity and you're able to make it and you're not able to, you come out successful. It's a real 
inspiration to others. And then I'm just grateful that I've been able to get this opportunity to witness some of these stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fatima, it is well. <laughs> God knew you before you were born. Mm -hmm. You had to go through all that just to prepare you for this testimony. That somebody watching out there will be encouraged and know that no matter where you are coming from, with determination, hard work, and believe in God, it is possible. It is possible. Yeah, it is possible. But I'm midwife, <laughs> soon to be. We need more midwives, you know. Okay, so now let me come to Zaidatu. I'm Shahad Bawa Zaidatu from Tamale. I joined Comfed after I completed senior high school. That was last year. Mm. I went to St. Louis Senior High School and then my senior high school education was rocky at that time. So I don't know, somehow I felt I, no matter what I was going through, I'll go to school that year and do what I wanted to do. So I managed to get some money and then I bought UDS forms and I applied for medicine. So I picked the form, I filled it and then I was called later that I was given the scholarship but on condition that I had admission to the school and my results were good. So when my results came, they were good. And then later on, I had admission to UDS to study medicine. And currently, I'm there doing medicine. I aspire to be a gynecologist because I want to help women. I so, beg, yes, do that, eh? <laughs> we do have many female gynecologists. <laughs> I beg you. And more so, you know, as you being a Muslim and being a gynecologist, you know, a lot of Muslim men, and I've worked with some of them, don't like their wives going to see male gynecologists because of whatever reason. In fact, all men don't like it. You know, so you being a Muslim and being a gynecologist, I don't know if we have one in the country at the moment. But even if we do, I'm sure there are very few. So I beg you, should I kneel down and beg you? <laughs> Concentrate on your education and please, okay, please make sure you live your dream. Right? Thank you. Okay. Ruka, so these are some of the stories. So Kama, what do you do when you come, when you graduate from, you know, school and you become a member, you go through the induction and you become a member of Kama? What do you do? You know, briefly as we wrap up here. Kama is all about giving back to our communities. Mm -hmm. That was the idea on which the 30, first 32 girls came together and formed it to work hard and then try to give back to our communities in ways that we can lead change and that we do through mainly through advocacy and then uh, role modeling mm -hmm. because most of the problems that we have on girl child education has to do with the attitudes that people have to girl child education so when we go out there and they see us see people like Fatima and Zaida and they see that it is not only the male child that can do well when they are given the opportunity to go to school. But I'm chairperson. As a network we have a vision. Okay. And the vision of the association is an Africa in which all young women are respected, valued and are also willing or dedicated to lead change in, t in their communities. Be the agent of change. Yeah, be the agent of change through the education that they have gotten right. by the support of Comfort. Rashida, I know Comfort at the moment operates in five regions. Upper West, Upper East, um, Northern. Four regions. Four regions. Yeah. Okay, four regions. Okay, so the three uh, regions of the North and then where? Central. And region. Central. Yes. These areas, these regions are considered to be some of the poorest you know areas mm -hmm. in the country mm -hmm. now how many people has comfort helped so far i um, mean young girls i mean girls i would use the kama current kama membership mm. we are over five thousand now mm. so that is to say that all every year we keep inducting girls into the kama network yeah so comfort so far has sponsored over five thousand girls in ghana only in ghana uh, I'm saying uh, in Ghana only because we have uh, comfort in other yeah. African countries, Country, Zimbabwe, right. Zambia, Tanzania, and Malawi. Mm. But just in Ghana alone, yeah, comfort 5, has sponsored over 5,000 girls. Yes. Currently, we have, we are sponsoring over 
uh, 32,000 mm. currently in, in the four regions. Mm. Okay, now you've confused me. Which one is the 5,000? Which one is the 32,000? Um, you are helping 32,000. Those past beneficiaries. Of Kama. So, Kama so members Kama have 5,000. Yes, over 5,000. And 5, then 000. there are 32,000 who are in school. Currently right in school. Currently. Yes. Wonder, Junior and senior high. I wonder how many children uh, government of Ghana is sponsoring in school. But that's <laughs> another discussion for another day. 32,000. Yes. yes. How do you get your finances? MasterCard Foundation has been so good to come fed mm -hmm. we also have defed when i came to nyangpala you you were doing something that's my end after when you do that i won't talk again Ghanaians should judge for themselves and i believe that young ones watching who find themselves in deprived um conditions or situations will learn something from this and you say something something shine or something you were doing something the way <laughs> i beg let's do that one then we'll wrap up. Shine. <laughs> shine. Oh, not that yeah one. that one yeah okay so let's shine 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 i'm not seeing it is it hot no. shine let's go fire 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 <laughs> and that's for comfort thanks for watching see you same time next week bye